There's always been those times when I needed a breather, when I might need a quick break from being the leader. Cause I'm just human, you gotta feel that. We're all just here to learn, and every day we all put up to bat. If you're feeling down, no, you ain't alone. And if you're feeling all confused, no, you are not on your own. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning in. Um, if it's your first time here and you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on my notifications so you know when I'm posting new videos. So today we're going to talk about how I got into UCLA despite the odds stacked against me. As you can tell in the title above, I'm talking about my below average SAT score. So we're going to jump right into it and don't forget to subscribe while you're watching this video. But anyways, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about my high school background and my education. I went to Hercules High School, which is a part of West Contra Costa Unified School District. Um, at the time, Hercules High was ranked in the 56th percentile in comparison to all the other ranked schools in California. So you guys can make your own conclusion of how well you think my high school prepared me for college. But despite going to a public school that was not highly ranked, I was still able to get into the number one public university in the U.S. And I know this might be up for debate. There's always these UC Berkeley people saying that they're number one. But if you go to U.S. News, it will tell you that UCLA is the number one public university in the U.S. And I said what I said and check the facts though, guys, because I wouldn't say it if it wasn't true. So let's jump into these factors that I think contributed to me getting into UCLA. So we're going to start with the obvious, which is grades. I feel like whenever anyone's applying to school, they are so fixated on their grades, which I think is reasonable because it is a huge factor that contributes to the strength of your application. I personally graduated from my high school with a 4.3 weighted cumulative GPA, and I did this by taking as many AP and honor classes as I could. I do really recommend taking AP and honor classes um, because it does strengthen your application. And I think that just taking the AP and the honor classes really slightly prepared me a little bit more for college. Don't get me wrong, college is a lot harder than high school, but it was a little bit more challenging and I think that was definitely needed. And I really also want to emphasize that I said as many as you can manage. There are so many factors that contribute to your ability to take AP and honor classes. Some people have to work after school, some people participate in a bunch of extracurricular activities which include sports, clubs, dance classes, music classes, whatever your extracurricular activity may be, you do not want to overwhelm yourself because if you're taking all these AP classes and honor classes in hopes to increase your GPA and it's too much for you to manage, then you might end up actually negatively impacting your chances of getting into your dream school because you'll be lowering your GPA. So. Don't feel forced into taking these AP and honor classes, but I do think that they played a really big role in helping me get into UCLA. I do not think that grades were the only factor that helped me get into UCLA. And I don't think people give the other factors enough credit as they give grades. For example, there are people in my high school that had higher grades than me, but unfortunately they were not accepted into UCLA, which really showed me that there are a lot of different factors that go into people getting accepted into these high ranked and well-known institution. So since we're on the topic of numbers, I'm going to go ahead and transition into SAT and ACT scores. <sighs> when I talk about these tests, I still probably have a little bit of PTSD from it because it was just such a struggle. SAT and ACT scores are solely standardized tests that are required by these universities in order to apply to their schools. I guess the rationale is them getting a bigger picture on how you do in these different categories, but in reality, I think it really just shows how well you can take a test. It doesn't really necessarily represent how well you're gonna do in school, because if my SAT score reflected how I was gonna do at UCLA, I would have been terrified to go. So, as you guys can see, I got a 1590 on the 2400 scale on my SAT. I'm just gonna let that sink in because I'm still letting it sink in with myself. I tried my best, I took it multiple times and 
that type of standardized test just wasn't something that I was good at. I thought that since I got a 1590 and it wasn't the best score, that I wouldn't be able to get into these schools because that's what everyone around me was saying. From high school counselors to college advisors to people in my classes, people were always like, that score is way too low, I wouldn't even apply. And honestly, it really took a toll on my confidence because I'm like, man, I worked so hard. I realized based on my own research that there was a real difference between averages and requirements. Just because a school has an average score, it doesn't mean that you're required to get that score in order to apply to the school. I think we get so caught up in these numbers and these averages that we forget that college applications are far more than just test scores and grades. I really realized this when acceptance letters came out. There are people at my high school that did way better than me on the SAT, that scored above the average, and unfortunately they were still not offered acceptance into UCLA. So it showed me that it's not all in the numbers. So you're probably sitting here by now wondering, okay, this girl's saying it's not just my grades, it's not me getting really good test scores, so what is it? What can it be? That's what we're going to talk about now is going into things that aren't just number based. I think that a really big factor that helped me get into UCLA was my personal statement. Your personal statement is your shot. It is open court, your chance to shoot your shot and hit on net by letting them know who you are. Let them see you for you. Let them see you beyond the numbers. And that's what I did. And I think that's what really helped me get into college. I think when you write your personal statement, you have to realize that this is the only opportunity you're going to get to essentially show your character to these people that know nothing else about you but the numbers on this paper and this statement that you're writing. So make sure you give them something to remember your name. You don't have to give them some amazing, life-changing story. You don't have to do something out of this world and be a hero. But you do have to show them that there is something about you that is unique. Something that makes you a contribution to their university. Because everyone applying has tried their best to get the best grades and get the highest test scores so they're looking for something different something else so it's your chance to give them something else i kid you not i wrote my statement like 10 times i revised it i changed it i hated it i loved it i went through all these emotions with my personal statement and in the end i realized that i had to go through those emotions i had to give it everything i got in order to feel like I gave that application everything that I had. So when you're writing your personal statement, I really want you to ask yourself these questions. What am I trying to convey? And what am I really showing them? And once you get those questions answered, I want you to go through your statement and I want you to read it. And I want you to ask yourself, at what point do I get bored? When do I want to stop reading? When do I get lost? And do I leave them wanting to know more? Because that's the point. You want them to want to know more. And not more where I'm saying, like, leave stuff out that you should have said. I'm saying you want them to want you to be at their school so that they know that this amazing person on paper became more at their university. That's my spill on statements, man. Just make sure you know that it's only 500 words. And... You might think 500 words is a lot, but when I first wrote my statement, it was 900 words. And I was sitting there like... <laughs> literally for hours. I was just like, what? what in the world am I going to take out? They need to know all these things. I just had to ask people that I trusted, people that were going to give me feedback and real criticism, what? is wrong with this what do i need to take out what is not necessary and what do you think are the most important parts when someone else objectively looks at your paper they will be able to help you out so much so find someone you trust whether that's a teacher um, a friend um, a coach a mentor someone who went to one of these colleges that you want to go to tell them not to sugarcoat it you want to know the good but you also really really want to know the bad so make sure you figure that out 
The next thing that I think contributed to my application were extracurricular activities. Personally, um, I played basketball year-round for my high school, and I also played travel ball. I participated in the African American Student Union leadership. I volunteered at different healthcare facilities because I knew I wanted a career in healthcare, and I think that really strengthened my application. By doing extracurricular activities, it shows them way more than you might think. It shows them your creative side. It shows them your passions. It gives them confidence that you can be an attribution to their school. It just gives them a bigger picture of who you are. If you look at it in the perspective of the person that is deciding between two people, you'll have someone with excellent grades, excellent test scores, somebody with good grades, good test scores, and someone that has a bunch of extracurricular activities, awards and honors under their belt because of those extracurricular activities, you're going to go with the more well-rounded individual. You just have to really look at it and what makes you more appealing, what makes you stand out. And if you look at it in that way, then I think it will really help you understand the importance of doing other things besides just academics. The next factor that I think contributed is me reaching out to people for help. And not just reaching out to anybody. I reached out to the direct sources. I found contact information for the people that knew the answer 100% instead of relying on my own thought process or relying on someone that might know the answer. For example, think about it like this. There's thousands of people applying. The easiest way to eliminate someone from the pool of application is to find a mistake. So you're not doing a part of the application right, you forgetting to submit something or you incorrectly submitting something is the easiest way for someone to be like, well, they didn't take the time to do the application right, so I'm just going to throw them out. I'm not going to reach out to them and figure out what they meant or have them send in documents because they have a thousand other people that are trying to get the same spot as you. Make sure you take your time and you go that extra mile to make sure that you're doing everything correctly. And I'm not trying to say don't ask your high school counselors, don't ask your parents, or don't ask your peers, or whoever you would normally reach out to. But I'm saying to make sure to do your own research. Your research is your best resource, and the best resource is someone that knows the answer 110%. If you go to any of the college websites, for example, if I was to go to UCLA.edu, I can find the contact information for admissions, for financial aid. I can find the contact information for the nursing department. So if I had a question and I couldn't figure out the answer and I was unsure, the first thing I would do was go directly to the source. How could you expect someone to know the answers to everything? There's no way that someone can be up to date with all the rules and regulations of every college. Things change every day. Things could have changed for this application cycle and it could have been different for the last application cycle. So you really need to do your own research. You have to really be determined to take that extra step, take that extra initiative and go out your way. And it might be uncomfortable at first, but it definitely will be worth it. The last and most important thing that I think helped me get into UCLA is really believing in myself. I told you guys without this whole video how many people told me that they wouldn't even apply because of my below average SAT score. And if I would have let that energy reflect on my optimism and my dreams, I wouldn't be here telling you guys all the things that I think helped me get into my dream school. So you really have to be your biggest advocate, you have to be your biggest fan, and your biggest support system. It's not guaranteed that someone's always going to believe in you, but as long as you believe in yourself, that's the most important thing. Sometimes you can have this crazy dream in your head and no one can see the vision but you, and you bring it to life and then all of a sudden everyone sees it. But you have to have that own confidence and that own security within yourself. I'm not saying that solely believing in yourself is going to get you exactly where you want to be. You have to put in the work, but how can you expect yourself to put in the work when you don't even believe you're going to get where you want to be in life? Find that inner confidence even when the whole world is against you or even when every odd is against you and every obstacle is in your way. You just have to have that optimism through all trials, all tribulations if you want to get anywhere in life. The worst thing someone can tell you is no. And if they tell you no, at least you can go to sleep every night knowing that you gave it your all instead of wondering what if I would have just tried. If I wouldn't have applied to UCLA because people told me not to because of one test score. I would have always wondered what if I would have just applied. So put yourself out there and have faith. I'm not saying anything in this video is guaranteed to happen exactly how it happened for me. But I am saying that if you take some of this advice, it can really benefit you in the long run.
in conclusion what I really want everyone to get from this video is one do not get caught up in the numbers the numbers are not everything two make sure that your personal statement really shows who you are show your character show your passion and give it all you got three participate in extracurricular activities do what makes you happy don't get caught up in thinking you only have to be solely academic only focused on grades because you're way more than that four do not be afraid to ask for help and make sure you're asking for help in the right places and then five just believe in yourself even when no one else is seeing what you're seeing believe in your vision and go for it and last but not least hit that like button let me know what you think in the comments. I would love to know what your dream college is. I would like to know if you already are in college. If you're already in college and you agree with any of this advice and you think it also helped you get into college, then I would like to hear those comments too. I think that's going to be it for today, guys. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, one love.